Hello everyone, this is Fide Master Carlos Mena for chesslessons.com. Today we're going to analyze um, a game I play over the web. My opponent was was like way underrated than I. But still it's a very instructive game, so we're going to pick up very general ideas, but very important. So first move, I'm playing black here. It's e4. Taking the center as usual. G6, my favorite weapon. Knight F3. This guy, as as a regular beginning beginner, is trying is trying to develop his pieces in the most natural way. But what he doesn't realize is like this is a close position, and in close positions positions. You should not develop your pieces the same way you develop them in open positions because in closed positions time is not so important. It is more important to place your pieces on good squares. doesn't matter how fast. It's not so important how fast you develop your pieces. It's, it is more important to where are you developing your pieces. So actually he's playing like Italian game, bishop c4, but here it doesn't work. After e6, that bishop is blockaded by my pawn. So that it doesn't have the same effect it would have in the Italian game where my pawn is on e5. Now he kept on developing his pieces, knight c3, now knight e7, now castle. Uh, d5, pawn takes on d5, pawn takes. After this exchange, we get a symmetrical position with pawns identically placed, white pawns and black pawns. But there's something very important, is like the bishop, now the white bishop is going to be in hazard. It's going to be in danger to be either uh, attacked by black pawns or simply or simply traded for one of my knights getting thus the two bishop the two bishops advantage so d5 pawn takes pawn takes this is another unnecessary check because this pawn move is necessary as well so actually he's helping me so bishop a4 now knight d7. In close positions you don't have to castle right away. Sometimes conveniently you can delay your castle. So that's why I play here knight d7. I'm hunting this bishop somehow. Maybe he should have played here d4 instead of d3. He played d3. Now after knight c5, bishop b3. Now I have something tangible, now I have something real, something concrete. I have the bishop pair, which is a very good advantage, especially on the end game. Knight takes here, pawn takes, now it's time to castle. This is another beginner's mistake, bishop g5. Why? He's developing his bishop to an exposed territory. Still, he's developing his pieces as if this position were open, and it's not open, it's actually closed, he's going to end up losing his bishops. Bishop h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, knight f5, Bishop e5. This this is an attempt to keep his bishop. Because I'm I'm taking I'm trading my knife for that bishop and then my advantage would be even bigger because I have two bishops versus two knights and not and not compens compensation at all for him. So bishop e5 is an attempt to keep his bishop alive. 
but after f6 bishop d4 now this bishop is exposed that means being attacked by this knight but right now we cannot take it because there's he still has a knight here on f3 defending the bishop on d4 so this is very this is something very instru instructive especially for kids this is a tactic very well known by chess players it is called removing the guard we're going to remove the knight which is on f3 which is at the same time defending the bishop on d4 how can we how can we do that well if you guessed if you guessed here g4 you did well because after g4 he's forced to move his knight sorry for knight d2 and now we take his bishop getting a huge material advantage a minor piece which is enough to win now the rest should be simple you just when you're up you have to trade your pieces and lead into the end game where your material advantage will be huge and where your material advantage is going to be more evident than when you have more pieces that's a very simple rule a richest player knows once you get material advantage once you're up pieces once you're up pawns you should trade all your pieces but not pawns now a4 a5 opening the opening the diagonal for my bishop c3 knight e6 here now there is a little trap uh, the knight on the border is not good and there's a special situation like there's no way back he doesn't have any square so now there's a real threat which my opponent oversees he plays queen e2 and after b5 his knight is trapped and we're going to increase even more our advantage c4 pawn takes on a4 takes on a4 knight d4 the rest is very simple it's, you're up to pieces here it's as simple as that queen d1 f4 c takes on d5 c takes on d5 knight d1 bishop d7 this this doesn't even require analysis it's just routine f3 weakening the king side even more g3 queen g5 somehow trying to create checkmate threats on h3 and g2 knight c3 queen h5 knight takes on d5 too many mistakes on these games it's it's a way lower rated players and we're playing blitz so it's it's not it's not unusual like you find like such gross mistakes queen takes before queen takes and the game over it's maybe he didn't have enough time yeah. thanks a lot i think i think from this game we can learn that you should take care of your bishops you should not expose them so they could not be traded by for knights because every chess player knows bishops are better than knights another thing we can learn from this game is like you should not develop your pieces on close i mean on close positions you should not develop your pieces the same way as you develop them on open positions because in close positions it's not so important how fast you develop your pieces but the most important thing is where to place your pieces the best squares it's not how fast we get there it's how accurate that square is for our whole plan so, uh, another important thing about this game could be like um, oh the tactic i mean the tactic at the end removing the guards and it's another thing to remember um, some general ideas that that will be very useful for you and i think this is enough for this game we now we're going to our next one thanks a lot